once again, uh, thanks everyone for attending our webinar. Uh, first off, my name is Eric. I'm with the marketing team here at Dynamism. And today we're going to be meeting with Levi from Form Labs to hear a little bit about how they went from an idea to producing 100,000 COVID-19 tests a day in just about three weeks time. Um, a couple quick notes before we get started. Uh, please submit any questions that you guys might have for us. I'm going to be monitoring those throughout the webinar and um, we will circle back on those uh, at the end. Um, also, we, we are going to be recording this webinar, um, so I'll be sending that to you after this concludes and um, feel free to share that with your colleagues. And then one last thing, uh, for those of you that are not familiar, I wanted to touch a little bit on dynamism about who we are. Um, dynamism is a brand agnostic reseller of professional 3D printers. Uh, we offer and are able to recommend best in class solutions depending on your applications, your budget levels, or maybe you're just looking for a certain type of technology but don't know where to start. Um, we do range from anywhere from desktop solutions up to industrial 3D printers. And our internal team uh, is quite extensive knowledge in both the, the technology and the processes. Um, so when you come to us, you're not getting started from zero. We're actually help, able to help you get started quickly. Um, and from there, I wanted to do a quick poll just to kind of help us out. Uh, just wanted to learn a little bit about you guys and how much you know about 3D printing or if you're currently doing it right now. All right, it, perfect. It looks like we have people from all across the board, um, everything from not at all to uh, researching to already using them. I, I know I saw a couple of Dynamism customers out there. Um, so uh, from there, I would like to go ahead and hand it off to Levi. Terrific. And Eric, uh, thank you so much for the, uh, the introduction there. Uh, just a quick sound check. You can hear me all right on your side, right? Yes. Perfect. So. Um, you know, one quick uh, just uh, piece of input I want to put out there with regards to dynamism. So just just a quick background on myself. I'm Levi, I'm the uh, channel sales manager for the uh, North American uh, channel over at Form Labs. I've been working with dynamism for about a year. They've been with us for probably about three. And uh, they're absolutely one of the best partners out there for a couple of reasons. I'd say one of the first ones is they take a true holistic approach to solving the application problems that you guys might be running into. So. You know, there, there's, a range, there's a range in a portfolio of products they offer. And really what it is, is you, you come to them with a, a potential application problem. They'll have a solution to fit your need. It's not just, hey, here's the machine we sell and it's going to solve your problem. So if you take a look at what Formlabs kind of brings to the table in terms of our partners, it's we're looking for people to truly extend our user experience with the knowledge and the expertise, expertise that they bring to the table. So again, really excited to be working with Dynamism, really excited to be kind of presenting today. And uh, just a, a quick rundown of kind of what we're gonna go over. It's gonna be short and sweet, and Eric, you can hit the next slide there. So just in terms of what we're gonna go over real quick, you know, we did a quick overview of Dynamism. I'm gonna walk you through just a quick history on Formlabs, what we see trending in the market. Uh, we're gonna do a quick overview of our print farm, which is where we're producing these swabs. Then we'll talk about the story of how we were able to get to an actual production swab in about a three week time frame. We'll dive into the benefits of modular production. Again, the, uh, the form 3B is the unit of production for these test swabs and we'll really kind of drive into what, what, what the uh, advantages of that are. And then obviously we'll answer a couple of questions, but most importantly, talk about the range of applications in this healthcare space that you guys can definitely uh, choose to, to participate in if you guys think there's a need. So uh, with that said, Eric, next slide. So the first place I want to start was is just our mission statement, which is we want to expand access to digital fabrication so anyone can make anything. And that's really our goal here at Formlabs is to really democratize SLA technology for the masses. And uh, there's two things we're constantly focused on over here at Form Labs. that is ease of use and versatility. How easy can we make our machines to use? 
and how versatile can we make them with that ease of use? And just a couple of examples there I like to kind of throw out there. First and foremost, in terms of ease of use, 44% of our users have little to no 3D printing experience. And I'm not just talking about folks that have FEM experience moving to SLA. Across the board, maybe they're just coming in as this is their first actual additive manufacturing machine. 44% of our users have little to no 3D printing experience. And again, and again 30, you know, within about 30 minutes of receiving our printer, people are up and running. So ease of use is a crucial component of what we do. Versatility really just comes down to the range of materials. Uh, we have over 27 different materials to choose from. So again, our journey over the last eight years has really been two questions, and that is how easy can we make our products to use and how versatile can we make them? And that's really what our mission statement's about is it's about giving this technology to as many people as we can. Uh, Eric, next slide. So just a quick kind of historical kind of breakdown of where Formlab started, you know, going all the way back to 2012, Max, our founder, uh, invented his first inverted SLA machine in his basement. And his goal was to give this technology to as many people as he possibly could. You know, that's why we started on Kickstarter was, you know, we, we had this really interesting idea. You know, let's see if people are interested in it, right? We want to get on Kickstarter, raise a couple hundred thousand dollars and, and, and get a couple, couple of machines out there. And what really happened in the first 30 days with that form one is we had close to 2000 orders. We had close to $3 million within the first 30 days. And that's when we really figured out there was a market for this technology. And so that was the form one in 2012. We did an iteration on that in 2014 with the form one plus added more versatility, added more, um, you know, print success to those machines. 2015 was when we launched the form two. This was a real game changer for us in terms of those two things, right? Ease of use, and versatility. And we put about 40,000 of these Form 2s out in the world in about four years. And from there is when we kind of evolved with uh, the Form 3 and the Form 3L in 2019 with a new proprietary technology called uh, low force stereolithography. And again, these machines have been exponentially uh, well received on the market. You know, if we put 40,000 Form 2s out in the world in 2015, we put more than uh, 10,000 of the Form 3s out in the world in about less than a year, year time frame. So again, really exciting technology. At the end of 2019, we did launch the Form 3B, which is our biocompatible machine, and of course, the machine that is printing all these test swabs. Um, Eric, next, next slide. So just in terms of our overall footprint, uh, 60,000 printers, and again, this is a little bit dated. It's probably closer to about 75,000 now. Uh, next slide real quick, Eric. And again, over 50 million parts have been made with uh, the Form Labs platform. Uh, next slide. And so the place that I always like to start with in terms of this journey is, you know, what people are thinking about with regards to additive. And it really comes down to a cost per part analysis. You know, the thing that I make, is it cheaper to do it with 3D printing? And, you know, this, this, this is really just kind of a showcase of what manufacturing workflows and processes are out there. But in 2009, most of 3D printing was captured in very expensive, large frame industrial machines is, is really captured with high-end prototyping needs. So let's say aerospace, maybe some automotive. Um, and so, you know, as this journey kind of continued and the cost per part dropped, that's when we get to really run into a range of traditional manufacturing workflows, right? From replacement parts to manufacturing tooling like jigs and fixtures. Uh, maybe you guys have seen some of the stuff we've done with New Balance. We're actually producing uh, a range of different uh, versions of the uh, New Balance uh, 904 right now. So, and again, that's all in use parts produced on the Form Labs platform. And the thing I always like to add here is, you know, when we start talking about test swabs and, and the production of those test swab kits, it's really not a cost per part analysis. You know, that's the, that's the question that is constantly the, the first question asked, asked, which is, is the thing that I make cheaper with 3D printing? And in, in the test swab production use case, it's really not a matter of, is it cheaper? You know, if you look at the manufacturers, the injection molding manufacturers that produce test swabs, you know, they can absolutely produce it cheaper, but with a, a disrupted supply chain and a, a disrupted global supply chain, there's not a whole lot of options out there for test swabs. And so, you know, really what it comes down to is being able to deliver uh, ease of use tool that can produce these swabs um, in a distributed model. And that's really the exciting component of kind of what we're gonna to discuss today. So Eric, next slide. 
So just in terms of what's trending in additive, you know, what was once just a prototyping and product development tool is really starting to enter manufacturing. And there's two key areas of improvement, right? The first and foremost, compact modular system, something that used to have to have a garage to actually uh, be placed, can now sit on your desktop. And then the second component is new material development. And this really just equates to the range of applications that SLA and additive have access to. And those are the two key areas of improvement. Uh, next slide, Eric. So the, in terms of uh, you know, compact modular systems, you know, the analogy we always like to draw on is computing power. So if you look back in the 1960s, 1970s, computing power was really contained within large, very expensive, very high-end mainframes. And as that technology evolved, moved to blade servers, moved to the cloud, this is exactly the, the type of analogy we see in additive. What, you know, because additive, again, is not a new technology. It's been around since roughly 1980. And what once took a Volkswagen-sized machine to produce a small plastic part is now producing the same plastic part on a desktop machine that can obviously sit in your office. And there's a range of benefits there, right? Redundancy, scalability, ease, of, ease and convenience, lean enablement. Um, and these are all you know, specific components that we'll actually drive into later on in the presentation. But just want to give you guys kind of the, the analogy we use and kind of where we see the future of digital manufacturing is heading. Uh, next slide. So a great example of this would be our print farm out of Ohio. And again, this is the print farm that is producing the, the test swabs, but traditionally, previous to producing test swabs, it was our print farm, right? And it was our print farm for sample parts. And this print farm, again, we, we ramped it up over about a two year uh, time frame. It's the largest uh, form labs print farm in the world, 250 form twos, 11 full-time employees, pumping out roughly 20,000 samples a month. Next slide. And if you've ever got a chance to go to our website, we have over 27 different standard samples to choose from. Again, all you have to do is request a part. We can send these through. Dynamism absolutely has these, uh, these samples as well, so you can definitely request them from them. But every one of our standard samples was built in that Ohio print farm. Next slide. And again, it's not something we just chose to do uh, right off the bat, right? We didn't say, okay, let's get 250 into our Ohio facility. It was something we ramped up over about a year and a half uh, time frame, right? And we did it roughly in, in, in batches of 20. But the Ohio print farm represents a couple of things to us. Obviously, it's the place where we produce our standard samples, but it's also been the test bed for our agile manufacturing technique process. And we use the, uh, the Form Labs, uh, pr you know, printer as the, uh, the unit of that modular production. Uh, slide. And what we've kind of done over those, that two year period is we've also created an exceptional amount of efficiency. So over a two year period, we've been able to reduce the, the, the cost per part by about 60% while increasing production fivefold. Next slide. And it's really allowed us to go after more difficult and elaborate samples to make, right? Not just simple stuff, but again, we've been able to really uh, elaborate and get very, um, very creative with regards to what the sample farm can produce. And uh, again, with this modular uh, production farm, we're able to really repurpose it when, the, when needed, right? And a great example of that, next slide, is what we've done with uh, test swab production. So if you think about what we've been able to do, you know, I, I'll give you guys kind of the journey here. Uh, we started roughly three and a half weeks ago with an initial sketch. You know, three and a half weeks ago, we sat down, what can we do to help? What can we do to respond to this? And, you know, test swabs came, came up pretty quickly, right? So we had an initial sketch. We had a, uh, a prototype three days later. We went with a couple of partners to obviously get it validated and approved. But within about a three week time frame, we went from uh, a sample farm that prints sample parts for, to showcase the, the, the printer to a test swab production farm to produce roughly 100,000 test swabs a day. And again, this is an FDA exempt class one medical device. Um, and it took us roughly about two weeks to retool and ramp up. So uh, next slide real quick. Part of how we're able to really get this uh, not only FDA cleared, but validated was working closely with some of our, uh, our healthcare partners out there. So we, we are partnered with Northwell Health and USF. Um, they were the team that helped us prototype and optimize the, the swab design. They're the groups that also validated 
uh, these swabs. Um, and again, we went through the standard uh, validation testing, right? The three day, the 24 hour, the leaching test. Um, and then they were the ones that are actually able to rapidly uh, deploy it for clinical testing. And so far, again, we've had, we've probably shipped out close to 100,000 swabs to customers already, but um, the test swabs have performed equally with the standard swabs used in COVID-19 testing. So again, really exciting. If anyone's in the medical device space getting an FDA exempt uh, medical device within a three week time frame, uh, it was a monster undertaking, right? And it's really just a byproduct of the terrific partners we get to work with. Um, next slide. And so just going off that point, you know, really what changes is just a couple of components of our workflow. When we talk about the digital manu manufacturing workflow and Formlab's ease of use, it really comes down to a couple of things. And so if you think about our print farm with 250 Form 2s, this is the rough workflow, right? You have the material, the slicing software and preform, the printer, and obviously the post-processing. And really what changes is our ability to switch out the material so we can start printing these test swabs. Next slide. The material we ended up using, of course, is our surgical guide resin. And this is a bio biocompatible resin we use to produce class one medical devices. Again, we repurposed it for test swabs, but you know, its use cases traditionally have been surgical guides for uh, preoperative planning. It's also been used for um, uh, surgical guides for dental implant surgeries. So again, this is the, the resin we use. Uh, next slide. Uh, once we had the resin that would work for these test swabs, we just optimized that file and preform for production. Um, we're getting quite a few um, uh, print swabs per build. So again, we just use our slicing software to optimize uh, for production. Next slide. And then once we have that, that preform build built out and printed, you know, we, we do have to do post-processing. So any SLA part that you make does require some post-processing. It does require an IPA alcohol bath, which is done in our automated uh, wash, form wash. And then it does require a post-cure in our uh, form cure oven there. Uh, next slide. And of course, the final stage for sterilization is a steam autoclave, which Again, it really just depends on who we're working with. Um, you know, we have the ability to do this in-house, but a lot of hospitals and healthcare systems have their own autoclave. They're actually sterilizing on site. Um, but again, this is the main, main changes we, we had to go through to make sure that we had test swabs to, to produce. Uh, next slide. And of course, this is how we got to the, uh, the finished product here. So again, we are producing 100,000 swabs a, a day. And uh, our first orders already went out last week to specific healthcare systems around the Ohio area. And again, it's been a really exciting uh, group effort over here at Forum Labs to really respond in a way that helps, obviously, with the, with the response of COVID-19. Um, next slide. So the next thing I wanna kind of touch on is the advantages of modular production. Because again, this, the story here is how we're able to repurpose our print farm to start producing uh, test swabs. Again, this is an ISO 13485 facility for, you know, it, it's, it's also the place where we produce our biocompatible resins. And there, there's some key benefits to working with a uh, unit of production at the desktop level. Uh, next slide. The first, of course, is redundancy, right? So when you start thinking about uh, what you need to produce, with a fleet of desktop printers versus a, you know, one large, large frame machine, there's a lot of initial benefits, right? The first, first and foremost is, you know, if one of those machines breaks down, it's very easy to swap in a new machine. This is usually what we see with our part partners in general, which is they'll have a fleet of production units. They'll have three or four uh, units on the side that are used for batch production, maybe some initial validation or prototyping. And if one of those production units goes down, they're very easily able to, to backfill with one of those uh, batch production units. So that is a huge benefit. You know, if you're running one large production, uh, large frame machine, that machine goes down, needs technical assistance, you lose all that production power for, for however long that machine's going down. So there's a lot of benefits there. And obviously geographically distri distribution is another crucial component there. Uh, next slider. Scalability is also a, a very important kind of factor of some of the advantages that we have at the desktop level. Um, if you take, you know, as an example, 1,250 units of production as your goal, um, when you break that, that unit of production into a smaller fleet of printers, 
uh, you're able to utilize a lot more of your production capability, right? What you really have is a step function as opposed to maybe an elevator function, right? So let's say you have one large frame machine, you're, you're at production capacity, you need to go up by about 20%. The only way to do that is to add another machine, and now you have a lot of unutilized production with, with form labs. You're able to break that down at a smaller level, and so you're able to uh, scale in, in more of a step function than more, more or less like an elevator function. So it's, it's again, it scales with your need, and um, again, reduces initial capital investment. Uh, you get a higher utilization per unit. It meets your exact needs, and of course, requires minimal installation. Uh, next slide. And again, there's a lot of flexibility to this, right? So when you have a fleet of printers, you're able to specialize operators. Uh, you can divide this large fleet of printers into more manageable loads. You can work multiple workflows through it or multiple different applications based on the range of materials you use. Um, and you only have to run machines when you know volume is fully utilized. So there's a, there's a lot of benefits. And again, if you as long as you uh, tinker with your workflow, you can stagger these machines to, to really uh, effectively post-process while you're printing so you're not losing any production time. Next slide. And this kind of feeds me into my next uh, kind of talking point here, which is lean enablement. So obviously at our print farm, we have the ability to specialize operators, uh, properly balance uh, cycle time line balancing. Uh, there's no inventory due to ba batching and there's a lot of efficient scheduling. So for example, if you had a fleet of 20 printers uh, and you had one specific application that you needed to do use, uh, what you do, you wouldn't run all 20 printers at the same time. You take the amount of time it takes to post-process a single uh, build across 10 machines, right? So if your post-processing time, for example, is four hours, what you wanna do is stagger those 20 printers. You know, the first 10 uh, start printing, you give it about four hours, you run the second 10. So what happens is you're constantly printing as you're post-processing. So being able to really kind of balance that um, without ever losing any print time is obviously a, another huge benefit there. Uh, next slide. And of course, uh, the ease and convenience when working with modular production. Um, what I really like about kind of what you see on the left there is really, it, it's, it's almost a view into Foreign Labs itself, right? You know, if you think about our Ohio print facility, that's our production floor. But across Foreign Labs, we all use the machines in-house for various, uh, various needs, right? So our mechanical engineers building the next generation machines, they prototype on the earlier version. So when we prototype the Form 2, we did that on the Form 1 Plus. When we prototyped the Form 3 and the 3L, we actually prototyped on the Form 2. And so, you know, there's a range of benefits. Obviously, fleet consistency is a big one there. But across the board, we're able to break this off into various applications or workflows, including production. So there's, there's a wider company expertise, um, and there's a lot of ease and convenience there. And so, you know, I really want to touch on those, those benefits of modular production, because, again, it's really what, what's allowed us to pivot and make sure we're able to produce test swabs at the quality that we needed to. Um, next slide. And of course, this is all done on the Form 3B and the Form 3 uh, LFS, Low Force Stereolithography Platform. And again, there's two things we are constantly focused on over here at Form Labs. That is ease of use and versatility. And uh, in terms of what these machines bring to the table, it's what, what's allowed us to pivot in the way that we pivot. And just a kind of a quick rundown of what the uh, LFS and the Form 3 and the 3B platform represent. Um, next slide. There's, there's a couple of key benefits I always like to touch on. The first, of course, is a very high print success rate. So low force stereolithography really has to do with peel force. So when you think about a traditional SLA process or uh, what we do, which is an inverted SLA print process, uh, there's a lot of peel force. And so LFS is the evolution on that, right? You know, we're able to take peel force on the Form 2 and sharply reduce that by about tenfold with low force stereolithography. And what that really does is creates a high level of print success. So 95 plus uh, print success um, and a very high level, high quality, high fidelity print um, that you get at the end of that print process. So again, there's a lot of huge benefits. I'm just lightly touching on it. Um, but when you eliminate a lot of peel force, you're able to build better parts, 
you're able to be more successful with the complexity. Uh, it's there's a lot of easy post processing associated to LFS because there's not so much peel force, so you don't have to create so much support structure around your part. So the support uh, the the post processing time is actually reduced when you print with our machines. Versatility, of course, still stays, stays the same across the entire platform, over 27 plus resins to choose from. Uptime was a big focus for us on this, uh, on the new Form 3 and 3B platform. So we have over 20 integrated sensors. It's gonna obviously, uh, it's got resin heating sensing, uh, remote printing, it has print failure detection. This is all built for uptime with these machines. And again, it is a very robust uh, printer in that sense. And I guess the last component I was going to touch on is a modular and RMA proof machine. So the LPU or the light processing unit is the uh, the heart and soul of this machine and it's now become user replaceable. Um, so in the past if you had a form 2 maybe you had some optics issues you needed to do an RMA you had to box that whole entire machine up ship it out ship it back. If you had a production uh, cycle that you're in again you're losing a lot of time a lot of money now we've built a modular LPU. So this LPU is now user replaceable. It's about a five minute changeover. And whenever your machine has an issue, all we have to do is ship you out that LPU and you replace it yourself in very easy changeover. So again, all built around uptime and making sure that we're, tr we're continuing that journey with versatility and ease of use. Uh, next slide, Eric. And so kind of going off that point, you know, the next thing I want to touch on is just some additional applications out there in the, in the medical space. So, uh, you know, if you take, take a look at Dynamo's uh, healthcare website or um, just some of the applications out there, you know, 3D printed at adapters for uh, snorkel mask conversion and PPE is a huge focus for us right now. Again, we've had a lot of success in Spain. Uh, the ventilator splitter is another intriguing application that we're, we're currently engaged with. Again, this, is, this should only be used in very uh, crucial, um, you know, it should be used as a last case scenario, but the ventilator splitter is there to obviously turn one ventilator into two to potentially three or four. Um, again, very interesting application. The other one we're currently working on is a fully validated respirator. Again, this is under evaluation. It's not as far, far along as the... Um, as the test swap, but if you guys have any questions or any um, any ideas or, around how you might be able to pitch in with maybe the machines that you're currently using, Dynamism definitely has all those details. Uh, next slide, Eric. And some non-medical applications. So again, any uh, Form 3 printer that you have, whether it's Form 3, Form 3B, Form 2, uh, everyone can engage in these non-medical applications. Again, we've released these SDLs and Dynamism definitely has access to them. Uh, one of my favorite, of course, is the, uh, the, the ventilator face mask frame, which is uh, obviously getting a lot of traction. A lot of people are starting to print this quite a bit based on what we see internally. But again, there's a range of applications that you guys can absolutely help out with if you guys have the print capacity and the time. And definitely reach out to Dynamism if you guys would like access to those SDLs. They have those available. Um, next slide. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, thank you for presenting that, Levi. Um, yeah, so we actually have the Formlabs material, um, and hardware and material ready to ship uh, if you guys are ready to get started. Um, those are available through dynamism.com. Also, uh, sales at dynamism, if you guys need a quote or have any questions. Uh, we do have four national showrooms as well. So those are in Chicago, Denver, Detroit, and San Francisco. And um, considering the, circ the, the current circumstances, we actually opened up a, a virtual showroom. So it's a, a telepresence robot that you can uh, navigate around one of our showrooms and see all the hardware and uh, interact with one of our sales professionals. Uh, so yeah, that, that concludes the, the main portion of our webinar. Um, we did have some Q&A um, that I wanted to get to. Um, first question is, uh, so what do you mean by a biocompatible machine? Yeah, so great question. I apologize. I, I probably ran through that uh, pretty quickly there. So um, we offer two on the, on the Form 3 platform. We offer two desktop machines. One is the Form 3, which is that, that machine. It's, it's, a, it's black. Um, again, that runs all our standard resins, all our engineering resins. 
and then our Form 3B, which is our biocompatible version of the Form 3. Um, and that is the white machine, which is producing these test swabs. So that biocompatible machine has access to all the standard resins, plus, of course, all our biocompatible resins as well. Okay. Uh, another person asked, so are you providing uh, test, swab, test swabs sterile? I understand that regulations that test swabs provided sterile were actually a class two device requiring submission to the FDA. Yeah, so you know, I, I think that'd be a question better better suited for USF or Northwell, but currently we're engaged with a, a range of different different potential options there, right? Currently we, we are shipping uh, these these swabs sterile for, for healthcare systems to sterilize on site. Um, so yes, that's that's kind of the route we're we're taking uh, internally here at Form Labs. Okay. Um, can you share your studies comparing your three D three D swabs to the standard swabs for respiratory virus collections of COVID? So I can't share them per se, and it really has to do with the fact that you know it's it's if we think about the IP of this swab, it's not tied to Form Labs specifically, although that is the tool that's producing it. It's really the IP of uh, Northwell and USF, but I know they have access to it, and obviously I have the ability on a one-on-one -on -one basis with Dynamism to really dive into what it takes to actually produce these in-house, and I'm happy to go through that. But I know um, USF and Northwell are looking to publish their study here pretty quickly. I think it's going to be in the New England Journal of Medicine, um, and obviously, uh, you know, they they've been the ones that have been validating and doing the clinical trials on their side. And we, and we can follow up with that uh, as well as soon as that comes out. Um, next question, uh, were you required to do biocompatibility studies uh, to be listed as an FDA exempt class one medical device? So that's a, that's a good question. Um, unfortunately, I don't have the answer on that one specifically, but I'm happy to kind of follow up with Dynamism. If you guys wanna reach out to them, I'm happy to kind of take that offline and get you some additional uh, answers in terms of the validation study, the clinical trials. That's all tied to Northwell and USF, but I know they are publishing their study here in the near term. I believe again in the New England uh, Journal of Medicine. Okay. Um, what one thing I did want to add there, Eric, is you know uh, companies do have the ability to produce these, and so do so do hospitals and healthcare systems. So. You know, healthcare systems um, have the capability to use our S or excuse me, uh, Northwell and USS STL design to, to produce swabs in house. And I'm happy to kind of walk anybody who'd be interested in doing that, uh, walk, walk through that with them. All you have to do is reach out to Dynamism. I can absolutely get that conversation lined up. Um, and, and the second group is, you know, anyone who's got an, anyone who's producing medical devices in or has history with producing medical devices. So, um, you know, any company that has ISO 13485 uh, certified facility that's FDA registered does have the capability to produce these swabs and produce them to distribute to local healthcare or maybe at the state level. So there is an opportunity to bring this in-house to produce to distribute. And so that is, um, it's producing under uh, the good manufacturing practice? Yes. Okay. Um, I have one other question for you is, so what's the maximum speeds and size of the uh, Form 3B? Gotcha. So I guess going off that point, it's, it, it varies so much, right? It exponentially varies and it varies by application. Um, in this situation, think of it this way, you know, if you're, each, each machine can produce probably 400 swabs per build per day. And uh, depending on what your needs are, that's roughly what we're seeing. So if it's application specific to the swab, that's roughly what you're seeing. Um, and in terms of maximum speed, again, it, it just varies by application. But you know, those are the rough numbers that we're doing internally at Form Labs. Okay. Perfect. Uh, is there anything you would like to add um, before we call it a day? Yeah, just just a couple of quick things. Um, in terms of uh, what Dynamism brings to the table, um, it's an exciting partnership we have. And I, th I think the best part about working with someone like Dynamism is they have a very holistic approach. So if you guys have questions around swab production, or if you guys have any questions around what SLA kind of does on a, in terms of your additive strategy, 
uh, Dynamism is going to have a great perspective and they have great experience in this space. So it's, it's really come to them with specific questions around the applications you have and they have a portfolio and a portfolio of products and a team with very, very solid experience to obviously deliver that solution. So do not hesitate to reach out to Dynamism. Um, obviously we work very closely together, but I just want to thank everyone for taking the time today. I know it's been a crazy, crazy couple of, couple of months here, but um, yeah, I really appreciate you guys taking the time. Yeah, and we appreciate having you. Um, for those that are still watching, uh, so dynamism.com, under the industry drop down, we do have the healthcare uh, portal, which is we've been trying to pull in some of these designs that are NIH approved, um, as well as we, we talk a little bit more in depth about what Form Labs is doing. Um, so it, we, we just basically try to pull together as much resources to allow you guys to, to start with the knowledge that we have in terms of which materials should be, you should be using, what ISO certifications they have, um, the sterilization methods, and, and a lot more. So um, I would definitely recommend that everyone check it out. Awesome. Um, All right. Well, I appreciate everyone coming, uh, stopping by for the webinar today, and uh, we look forward to hearing from you. Thanks, everybody.